have to eliminate willpower as much as we can. Willpower doesn't work. If you can rely a lot on willpower, it's one of the reasons a traditional North American diet doesn't work. So it's black and white. You're either fasting or you're feasting. You're listening to The Radcast, a top 25 worldwide business podcast. If it's radical, we cover it. Here's your host, Ryan Alford. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the latest edition of The Rad Cast. Hey, I'm Ryan Alford, your host. We say if it's radical, you cover it, we cover it, and you're here to listen. And, you know, this this gentleman hit my feed, and like a lot of people hit your feed on social media, on the gram, and, you know, kept coming, kept going. I don't know what it was. The algorithm was speaking to me, I guess. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I was diet searching or what I was doing, or it was like... How can I stop eating so much? <laughs> no. But Kyle Newell here, the Panda Man. What's up, Kyle? What's up, Ryan? Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, this man. It's really cool to be here. Yeah, I'm so glad you could make it in studio. Welcome to G Vegas, as yeah. we call it. Yeah, Green- beautiful. <laughs> Greenville, South Carolina. Beautiful place, man. I'm gonna have to bring my family down here. Hey, see? Yeah. I know. Hey. I need to get I need to get uh Greenville Tourism involved here as a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. Everyone yeah, I bring to Greenville is like, man, this is nicer than I expected. Beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Hidden gem. I know. So speaking of hidden gems, <laughs> the Panda Diet. I know you got the book coming out or already out? The book's out. Yeah, the book's, book's out. book's already right? out. Yeah. Um, I started reading about it because the fasting stuff has gotten so popular. And I know there's a lot more to it. I like That's what I liked about it. I think I see a million people like promoting the fasting. And I was, I'm always like, and I've done a couple. And we've all We've all done them, right? But I'm like, I need something more full body, mind, spirit, soul, like whatever. And I think that's when you hit my feed and I'm like, all right, yeah. I like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this makes sense to me. Yeah. I hadn't done the one meal a day thing. I know yeah. we're going to get into that. Sure. Some of the core benefits of it. But Kyle, let's set the stage for everybody. Let's um, let's, let's talk about the Kyle Newell story. Yeah, sure, <laughs> man. So. Where do I begin with that? Grew up, you know, as we, we were saying before, I got three brothers. All We're all close in age, you know, all born between 1980 and 1985. I'm the second oldest. And playing sports throughout our upbringing, really big into sports, sports fans, playing all pretty good athletes. My parents were great, you know, and they still are great. Uh, I grew up in a very non-judgmental environment. Like my parents gave us a lot of freedom, but we they taught us the values, right? Like, so we were just good, kind people. So we moved to New Jersey in the late eighties. And, um, you know, we've kind of been in New Jersey ever since. And then coming up when I went to college at university, well, back in high school, I went back up playing. I gave everything up for basketball. That was, you know, kind of stupidly. Like I stopped playing baseball, stopped playing football. I was like, I want to, I want to play division one basketball. So I developed a lot of discipline around basketball, you know, 500 jump shots a day, you know, making at the time an AAU team was a big deal. Now everybody's got them. So doing stuff like that. And through that path, I got into lifting. So, uh, you know, I remember the first book I ever ordered in high, it was at the end of my, it was my senior year. I ordered this this physical book from a bodybuilding magazine. It's called Big Beyond Belief. And it was all about training, like, because I was getting really into it. You know, and it just grew into a passion to the point where my senior year, I almost didn't play basketball because I fell so in love with the lifting. So, you know, so I've been studying this for way more than half my life now on a pretty deep level. And then that kind of led to going to school, fitness management, went to University of Delaware. It was a good experience, but I didn't. What am I going to do when I come out with that? So Did you then, play basketball? No, I didn't. Uh, okay. I had, uh, Ithaca and Utica <laughs> were two schools that, that had reached out that I could play at. But by that point, I was like, you know, you know, like you said with the intramural, yeah, I'm good, you know, playing for fun. Yeah, you knew what it was gonna be forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it, you know. And it was uh, came out worked with Rutgers football strength and conditioning, so that was a really good experience. But again, at the end of that summer, I'm like, what am I gonna do? Went back for teaching health and phys ed, and while I was doing that, I was also uh, competing in natural bodybuilding shows at the time. So again, just learning a ton. People would always come up to me, ask me questions at the gym. Hey, what you're doing looks unusual. What is that? I had people asking me about my training way back in the day before I even 
CrossFit was barely started. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. And people say, is that CrossFit? I'd be like, I don't even know what CrossFit is. <laughs> you know, but this is- I, would, I, would take, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the time, it was, it was crazy. But I took what I had learned, and then what I learned from Rutgers football, like a lot of those dudes were jacked. I'm like, okay, there's gotta be a different way to train than just bodybuilding training. So I applied that when I would get ready for shows, training more like an athlete for the shows. And then over time, you know, my methods kind of just kept growing and uh, I just kept studying. I'm always studying. I feel still, I still feel like a novice with everything. So I'm just voracious with how I read and who I learn from. And I, so I taught in the public school system from 2006 to 2012. And at that point, uh, I resigned. I put in my letter of resignation because I had started my gym. You know, started out of my car. Then my parents let me build something in the basement, the studio. But my wife, who we met through teaching, she was a teacher as well. Um, I had a really bad patellar tendon rupture the, the that year. I had pneumonia. And we just realized, okay, you're kind of burning out. So I would train people before school go teach all day, drive right back to the gym, train people all night. And this was five days a week and then Saturday mornings. So, and I wasn't sleeping because I was like, man, I got I got more to do, more to do, more to do. So I put in a letter, letter of resignation. And the, when I put that letter in, literally that weekend, I put it in on Friday, Hurricane Sandy hit New Jersey and the roof got ripped off my gym. And so I already have to let, and I'm like, man, I, look, I took it as, a, as just a test from God that, uh, what are you going to do now? <laughs> and I was like, well, I can't go back. You know, so the gym was destroyed. I had to move spots. Wound up going to a bigger spot. Man, but I don't have my safety net of teaching anymore. Yep. But it all worked out, you know, and, and, and it just kept evolving. It, it evolved. You know, we opened another gym probably about five years ago now in a, in a local uh, neighboring town. Well, the gym's called? Newell. My last name, Newell okay. Strength. Newell Strength. Yeah. So it's all small group personal training, you know, and through that, it's uh, met so many great people in you know, with marketing, I, I probably studied that just as much as the training. Once I realized, okay, you gotta learn how to write. You got to learn how to do direct response marketing. You got to learn all this stuff, the branding. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's all part of it. Yeah. And I will say this, you know, back to the roof incident, you know, you wanted to wade into the water. God said, no, you're going to the deep end, going son. to the deep end. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. You know, we looked at you like, I'm wading in. I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, no, you diving in. Right in. It, and then when they were showing me replacement units, they showed me one that was twice the size. <laughs> I took my father-in-law, you know, he was a business owner, and I, you know, I thought he was going to be like, I'll play it safe. Because again, now over, the overhead's going to, rent's going to double and all that. And he said, hey, go big or go home, man. He goes, this is what you wanted. So, boom, signed the papers and, you know, just kept moving forward. And my wife's been, you know, my wife, Devin, she's been incredibly supportive. She knew from day one that I kind of, March to the beat of a different drummer that she was going to be in for a different type of life. And, uh, you know, so she resigned from teaching after our second child. So she'll help with the businesses. And finally this year, now she's just, uh, stay at home. She's running the household, which okay. I wanted, you know, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. Talk to me about Newell strength. Like where did, I mean, I know you started the foundational stuff said everybody always said, what are you doing yeah. when you're at the gym? But what, were there like foundational beliefs in the way you train? Like what, what grounded all that? Yeah. So my philosophy from early on was is strength and conditioning. So it's not do a set of bench press and then sit around. I always believed in, in, okay, let's keep a fast pace going. Let's, okay. You, if you're hitting a push or a chest day, let's supplement that while you're recovering from that and do something else. That's going to keep your heart rate elevated or do up or lower. So it was that type of, of training and then different moves, working in different planes of motion, you know, so having that that influence of being a Rutgers football, seeing how Jay, you know, JB trained these guys, you know, and then I, I would learn and I would apply and I would do that. And it just became something unique as far as like farmer's walks. I was doing those before anybody knew what they were, you know, I'd pick up the dumbbells in the gym and walk around the gym. What are you doing? I'm, I'm working on carries. What does that do? You know, it, it was just stuff <laughs> like that. It just kept growing. So I call it uh, P-H-A-S-T, Peripheral Heart Action Strength Training. So I want the head pumping, I mean, the heart pumping head to toe with blood. So that was that was kind of the, the foundations of it. And uh, just train hard. You train hard. How long did your workouts when you were doing those? When I was doing those, man, when I, <gasps> when I first started, 
um, with that with the original book, man, I would spend like two, two and a half, three hours in the gym. Now it's efficient, man. I mean, we work out with the guys Friday morning and it's, <clears throat> everybody catches up. There's a social aspect, but I believe in like 45 minutes, you should be, if you're going hard, you should be smoked. I always liked the staying active. So that kind of resonated with me. Like the, okay, you do the bench press, but doing something, something. like in between, yeah. keep your heart rate up or, you know, at least mentally in the game. Yeah. Cause for me, you know, I'm, <laughs> distracted ADD, whatever you get your phone out. Like that's my biggest thing is like staying in the moment. Staying locked in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it is, you can make a workout almost meditative when you keep that pace up, you know, when you don't have the time to, to, and so I like even working to the clock, just like in, in when I'm working with writing something, set the timer. Okay. I think that's a great method for people to count down clock. Yeah. You know, it creates more urgency. It does. And it, it's both urgency and you both know when it starts and what knows when it ends. You know when it's out, <laughs> like, man. Yeah. So you got to pace it, but also stay at it to know yeah. you've got an end in sight. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Having that deadline. Exactly. So you built the whole business kind of around those techniques yeah. and doing growth. So what, what, like three, four, five people, like small groups? So, <clears throat> yeah, the, the, <clears throat> when I first opened the first facility, um, at that point, it was kind of, you know, I didn't have the systems in place, right? Like I was training people in, I started with one-on-one. -on -one, then I said, okay, I'm getting burnt out with that. Then I went to like a semi-private, I called it, three to four people. Then when I moved to the facility, it was like, okay, I'm open from four to eight, show up, I'll coach you. So I had to work out and I would have 15 guys in there, 20 guys um, going. So nowadays what it is though, is we have a ratio of six to one clients to coach. So we'll have usually a max of 12 in a session. So we're still getting that personal training feel. The coach could administer and make the changes as needed. But it's a great model for people because you're getting coaching, but you're not necessarily, a lot of people don't want to pay $150, $200 an hour for a personal trainer. Yeah. You know, so it's like that hybrid model. Yep. Still getting enough one-to-one -to, -one to where yes. they can tailor something to you. Yeah. You're also getting the camaraderie of a small group, that's, right? That's huge. Kind of gets a lot of things, which is a lot of things for, for people, you know. It's huge. That team aspect. It really is. It's, yeah. a, it's that social aspect. And, you know, one-on-one -on -one gets boring, man, when people are there and it's, uh, you know, but when you have other people working alongside you and they're trying to work towards a similar goal, it's big. One-on-one -on -one to me, a lot of what I see is just therapy happening in the, like, yeah. you know, and I'm no judging. It's just, I, I just see it and it's, a lot of talking, a lot of everything else. I'm yeah. like, it seems that way now. It's a thousand percent. And, and I tell you. And know, that's fine. But if you want therapy, you know, go lay on the couch, yeah. you know, but yeah, yeah they can talk to somebody. But Exactly. You know. And it winds up driving like a young trainer or whatever. They'll go crazy with that because they want to train, you know, but then you wind up talking, like you're saying, 40 minutes out of the 60 minutes. Yeah. Because people just want someone to talk to. They need an outlet. Yeah. <laughs> it was fine. Yeah. But uh, so there, so we got the two gyms. Where, where did the panda come in? So the panda, <laughs> so this is an interesting story. It was, uh, I think, 2000, 2014 or so. Um, so I'd resigned already from teaching. So I'd work from home during the days and I'd go to the gym at night and or the PM hours. But Ron Artest, do you remember Ron Artest? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I was a big Chicago fan. Chicago Bulls. Yeah, yep. Bulls, Lakers, won a title with Kobe. Yep. And I liked, you know, I always I f followed him at St. John's. I, um, I loved his style. It was more like the old school style, just tough defense, you know, it's a little bit crazy. Was Ron the, became Meta World Peace? Yes. Is that the same? Yeah. yeah. So he became okay. Meta World Peace, but for a little period of time, he became, I think it was the Panda's friend. He named, <laughs> he named him so that. And I was, I was a fan of his. And he, he sent out, an, I was on his email list, and so I got new apparel coming out. And I said, oh, I'll support him. I was like, that's yeah. pretty cool, a panda. So I bought his hat and uh, I actually got a panda tattoo here because what it, I started researching the animal. I'm like, oh, a panda, man. A lot of people thought it was a mythological creature to not that long ago. They don't, it, the, it, it's cool, man. It, it, it's like, it was thought to be this myth. And then it got the black or white. You got the duality. A lot of people think it's this cuddly creature, but it'll also rip you to shreds. I was mm -hmm. like, I kind of connect with Like I feel like that connects with me. Like if you called it like a spirit animal. So then that was that. And then when um, 2019 came around, so at the time I had just started fasting, like intermittent fasting. 
which was your 16-hour uh, fast, which was a game changer from what I was doing to bodybuilding. I knew I was on to something, but I did that for about five years, 16 to 18-hour fast. And then <clears throat> when it came time in 2019 to do a fat loss contest with my staff, because we were participating alongside the clients, so, okay, I got to step on my game. I was about 250 pounds, 16% body fat. So I wasn't fat, but I, w I just didn't feel, I was too big. I didn't mm -hmm. like it. My neck felt too big. And I said, let me start looking at longer form fasting. So I did that the whole first summer. I was doing 72 hour fast every week, then one meal a day, and just experiment. And then I started saying, okay, I could teach this to people. And when it came time to, to write the book, which I wrote like in the, in the peak of the COVID hysteria, so what am I going to call this? And I said, oh, the panda diet. You know, it just kind of popped into my head. <laughs> and now as far as the panda man, when uh, it was a little over a year ago, I had lost my Instagram account, my, you know, my personal one. I don't know if I had posted something that was offensive or whatever, but it was gone. Like there was no, not even a record of it. Yeah. And then when owner here uh, had approached me, you know, he wanted to start a media company. Um, we kind of said, okay, what are we going to, what are we going to call this? You know, and then we played around with, I think I had come up with a temporary one, like Panda Man K and my initials. We said the Panda Man, you know, so that's <laughs> kind of where it came from, the Panda Man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love it. Love the branding too. Yeah. Thanks. You know, if you're not, if you're listening, you got to go watch this on YouTube, plug the YouTube channel in uh, so you can see the, yeah, the Panda and, gear. And these, you know what these, these reminded me of Pandas, you know what these actually are. They e look like Panda. That's yeah, yeah, assumed it was. Ewoks. Oh yeah. Remember Ewoks? Is that really little Ewoks? Yeah, yeah. From Star Wars? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, pretty awesome, man. And then yeah. they've got the hat. This is our brand, you know, the Panda. I like it. Yeah. Hey man, branding's everything. Yeah. Hey, it's, it caught my attention, I'll be honest. That's it was cool. like, like, then I was like, the, the substance, the brand caught the eye, then the substance of you. Yeah. You know, where does this, there's like this quiet confidence with you that resonated me with your content that wasn't, you know, some of the yelling, screaming guys and the stuff that's like, everybody's got their own stick, right? Or their own yeah. way, yeah. you know? Um, but I always liked that about you. And then now in person, we were, what, you always been that way? Or did yeah. you have something transform you into that way? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I think it's, um, I think I've probably always been this way. I'm a big introvert when we decided to go all in on the personal brand, um, you know, me and my wife, and then it just everything was synchronicity when owner reached out here and, but she had told me, she said, you gotta be more um, comfortable with being a celebrity. Like a lot of people locally look at me like that. And, you know, we've been on national TV with the news and all that. So I, I haven't, but I was always, I don't like attention. Yeah. Right. But I, I'm, I'm going back to the studying aspect. I'm constantly just learning. Like, and sometimes you think that's normal, but I get it's not a normal thing for most people. No. So I have built up a lot of knowledge and then I experiment with everything. So I develop what I call direct knowledge, which is to me wisdom. So yeah. I'm like, I, when I teach my stuff and the way it comes across, it to me, it's just the truth. So I'm like, I don't have to yell to get that across or whatever it is. This is the truth as I know it. And it's okay if you disagree with it, but this is what I've come through direct experience. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm always trying to seek and acquire wisdom. And um, again, being the introvert, you know, I was always shy, not loud or boisterous or anything like that. So I think I've probably always been like this. I think the, um, I use the analogy, you're, you're either a sponge or a faucet. And the faucet's always letting out too much. The sponge is always soaking in too much sometimes. But I've like, you got like this good balance. Maybe you found the yeah. way to you know, you've been soaking it all in, but you're finding ways now to share it. To share it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously social media is huge. And the the teaching, you know, I'm obsessed with because that's how I learned the best. I think, you know, that's the highest form of learning. Yeah. So to me, it's like learn, teach. Even before I, I necessarily even know sometimes all the answers, I'm like, because I don't know if you ever know all the answers, but I'm like, teach it now. I internalize it more and I figure it out more. What was it like, you know, you've, you've got the gyms, you know, we get a lot of people, obviously business and marketing show, you know, like scaling the company, growing it. What are some of the trials and tribulations of doing that? You know, like yeah. what, what are the learnings? It's huge, man. <laughs> so from going, being the technician where it was just me and the passion was the training. So I was doing that, right? Like that was me. I had an intern when I opened the first facility and once I realized, okay, you got to hire people. Yeah, like, you were because you were in the business and not working on the business. Correct. Right? Yeah, <laughs> every little break I had during the teaching day when I was doing both, 
was spent on the business. Yeah. But then doing all the technical stuff and then getting burnt out with all that. <clears throat> so it, it, the biggest thing to starting to finish to now is managing people, hiring the right people. I remember the first time I had to fire somebody, man, it was, it was nerve wracking. And uh, one of my coaches who still coaches me as a business coach, he's a great friend. Um, he had kind of walked me through it. And I remember the one piece of advice. He said, listen, as soon as you sit down with this guy, think of it like punch him in the face, tell him right away, don't make small talk. But, and then you can go into, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, obviously there's been many times since I've had to do stuff like that, but it's been the managing of people like it, cause that's where the emotion comes in. If you take the emotion out of business, it's easy, <laughs> Yeah, but it's hard to do with people. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's hard to do. Is it, uh, has it just been an acquired skill or has it been something that's just over time you get better at it? Uh, both. Yeah. It's acquired a <laughs> lot, a lot of investing in education and that stuff and coaches and masterminds and, and then just kind of letting whatever my natural leadership style is, you know, cause it's the same thing. I'm not yelling at them. I, you know, I expect them to do a certain way, you know, to do their job and be a pro live by our core values, but I'm not micromanaging them. You know, I want, I think autonomy is huge for people. So giving people, Hey, you do it as long as it gets done the right way, do it however you want. So you got the two facilities. Yeah. Uh, any plans or has there been about going broader, bigger, so, those kind of things with Newell? Yeah, that's funny. It's uh, when we opened the second one at the time, so that was 2018, the plan was to open seven to 10 within a, a pretty tight footprint, you know, <clears throat> uh, part of Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Yeah. And then once um, COVID hit and all that, I was like, I don't want to do seven to 10, right? Like I was just, cause I was seeing, I'm like, man, I gotta manage more people. Everything's, <laughs> you know, I just didn't want to do it. So that's how the second one came about. Like in hindsight, again, I probably would have just kept the one if I knew that. So right now there's no plans to, it. we're kind of thinking with, with the pan demand and merging that with neural strength, like a gym without walls, where we can educate people and, and teach people and put them through stuff. And, so as far as physical locations, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but it would have to be the right person. Yeah. You know, it would have to be uh, me not being, now I'm not very super hands-on in the day-to-day right. -day with the gym now as it is, so it would have to remain that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk a little more about Panda. Like, what um, What are the, like, key attributes for pandas, though? Like For <laughs> uh, the actual animal? Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people will ask me to play because that because that's what a panda eats. I'm like, no, it's got pandas eat bamboo largely, which is funny because around our house we have a ton of bamboo just <laughs> coincidentally. Um, you know, when we moved to that house. So the key attributes as far as the reason that, again, you know, I look at the symbology of it, black or white, right? So I do something called mind mapping, which is the science of how your brain forms habits. And a big part of that is clarity. Right. And we have to eliminate willpower as much as we can. Willpower doesn't work. If you can rely a lot on willpower, that's what one of the reasons a traditional North American diet doesn't work. So it's black or white. You're either fasting or you're feasting. So I really lock in with my students on the word decision. I mean, it's to sever, cut yourself off from any other possibility. If you leave the option to, oh, I might eat, let me see how I feel, you're not going to succeed. So it's got, it's like a, you take like a meat cleaver to it, black or white. And then the mindfulness, like the yin yang, the black or white, like I want you to enjoy your food. Food's a drug, but we should be present when we do not eating in a, 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 in, in a rush, in a stress state. So I bring that to it. So that's kind of the, the, the philosophy behind it. And as far as the mechanics, it's, it's ancient biblical stuff that's been around. I'm just kind of putting my own, you know, my own verbiage on it. But it's longer form fasting is the premise, right? So if you look at like my black panda, which is how I live, it's a 48 hour fast to start the week. And then I got one meal a day, which sounds extreme, but coming from the bodybuilding background, where everything had to be weighed, measured. And I'd be doing these starvation diets and I could never get as lean as I wanted to when I wasn't stepping on stage. So there's gotta be a better way than this, you know? And <clears throat> then experiment with the longer form fasting, researching, immersing myself in it. I found it. I said, this is the way. This so the way. Monday to 48 hours. So let's just say it's a seven day week. Let's, it might be different for you, yeah. but Monday and Tuesday, we're not eating Correct. period. So a Sunday night, yep. then I break it Tuesday night. 
Got it. So I go 48 hours in between, you know, so Monday's the only day on a regular week that I'm not eating. I got it. So it's only one yeah, actual it's one day, day, but it's 48 hours. 48 hours. And then you go. you'll have a meal Sunday night. Correct. And then you'll have a meal Tuesday night. Correct. Okay, got it. And then one meal a day, you know, and I built within that when I take people through it, hey, if you want to have a cheat day or a cheat meal, totally fine. Because that, that was something I used to do big time when I was uh, <clears throat> bodybuilding. And it's more of just a psychological outlet for people. And I'm like, don't worry about, I don't stress. I say, okay, I'm big into making sure people get fruit in their diet. But let's get your fasting time down first. You have a lot more leeway when you eat like this with what you eat. So you can enjoy the foods you want to enjoy too, right? It's not, oh, you can never have a carb. You can't do this and that. Stuff that doesn't work, right? So yep. How many... How big of the one meal is just eating as much as you want? You, like, it's a feast. So I teach a feast, man. So until you you're done. Yeah. Like, I've got a, an, uh, me personally, I've got a voracious appetite. How like, many calories are in your one meal? For like, me on the average one, it's between three and 5,000. Yeah. But if I'm, if I'm super hungry, like my appetite's built up. Like when I used to do those cheat days when I was bodybuilding, when I'd be in what's called super compensation state, not throughout the whole day though, I'd be doing, I've done as high as 25,000 calories in a day. Which I can't do, like I can't do that normally. But it yeah. was when you're in this this super depleted state, hunger hormones are all messed up and all this. So you combine that with the natural appetite I already 25, have. 25,000 calories in a day. You feel terrible afterwards though. But that's one meal? No, no. That, was, that, like, that was before the fast. Out. Yeah, that okay. was before the fasting. That was an all day I'm Sunday. I'm trying to think how you do that. Like how do you get 25,000? That was all day fat. That was all day uh, eating, excuse me. Yeah. You're from us eating like every hour on the Every hour. hour you're, I mean, you're eating, you know, boxes of Girl Scout cookies. You're eating <laughs> peanut butter. You're, 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 yeah. you're, you're doing whatever. But eventually my wife was like, because I would be able to stay lean like that, right? And being in a deficit the rest of the week when I was doing the traditional stuff. But I'd be in a food coma by like four o'clock. And she's like, is this really worth it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, probably not. You know, it was, it was a cool, I would love, I would look forward to those cheat days, but it was like not a good way to actually function. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is, uh, what's in the, is it, so is it up to the person? what that one meal is. So you go 48 hours, you get the one meal per day. Yeah. Is it up to the person of what they want to eat? So it, what I teach like is in an ideal setting, if you're at your home base, start with fruit. I like to start with fruit, not at the end. What kind? Whatever you want. How much? However much you want. And just keep in mind, it's your one meal. So you one get meal. too full on the bananas, yeah. you're not going to have as much steak as you might have Correct. A lot of people, <laughs> or whatever yeah, else. it knows that fruit, it's great for detoxifying the body. It's digested further down in the intestine. So I want to get it through the system first. It's got all the micronutrients. It's like, it's like a super food if there was one category. And it hits those stretch receptors on the stomach, right? So all of a sudden you are, okay, let me just go at a nice pace here. Don't have to gorge mm -hmm. myself. And then anything that came from the earth, I say, like, in, again, an ideal setting. Veggie, have your potatoes, your rice, whatever, your protein source. And then what I do on a you know, regular night, I do like soaked oats. I'll put oatmeal, raw milk earlier in the day, uh, you know, cocoa powder, cinnamon, stevia, put a little frozen blueberries when I have it. That's my dessert. So I love that structure. And what I find with people and myself over time, when you do this, you really start craving those types of foods. Yeah. Like you really start craving the good nutrition stuff. But so that's you, the idea. So you want so. There, it's still some pretty healthy food, even yeah. as much as you want. Yeah, but I have people that will you eat have pizza people every night. They'll eat pizza or, every night, and they still get results. Yeah, you know it's because you're, you're pizza affecting and, and uh, peach cobbler or like hey, it, <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you, ice cream on top. Of you, yours. Does surprised. it matter? I mean, at the end of the Not day, because because you you've got it's only one meal a day. Correct. You got the two days of fasting built in, so yeah. it's like it doesn't I would matter almost like it wouldn't matter because you're limited. Insulin. You're gonna get full. Yeah, I mean, so that's it. <laughs> whether you eat three thousand or sixty five hundred, that might be a little more than you want, but still, you know, you get full and it, you're already controlling insulin for majority of the day. That's what we're trying to do, right? So when people, because I'll get people on that flip side, well. I want to do this, but then I want to do carnivore. I want to still have, you, you know, don't break it with any carbs. I'm like, why, why? So I have them explain it. Well, I want to limit my insulin. You already did that. You know, so now let's take advantage of the anabolic effect of insulin when we eat, as long as we're training. Anab insulin is the most anabolic hormone in the body, right? So let's use that to our advantage to build muscle mm -hmm. and to flood these nutrients into muscle cells rather than fat cells. So, you, you know, it's like the, 
this uh, slingshot effect, I call. What time do you eat? So Tuesday night you're eating. Yeah. What time are the one meals? It, it's din you, dinner. Uh, it's I always eat, dinner. Yeah. That's what I recommend for people and what I do because of habit formation. That's usually when you can eat with your family or yeah. your social events. Physiologically, the best time of the day to eat would be around lunch. But yeah. again, how many people are going to form a habit around that? Yeah. You know, so I like dinner. I that makes that. sense to me, too, because like when I've done anything, I haven't done anything like this, just in full transparency. <laughs> but when I've done other diets or things, I'm not hung. I can go. I'm not really that hungry when it, I don't know if it's a man thing or whatever. I can go till two, three o'clock practically anyway. Like when days I'm busy, get busy in the morning. Yeah, I get hungry, but like they they start a it's nothing like the hunger at night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I feel like that's doable yeah. to make it till six PM or whatever the time is, you know, to Definitely. do the one meal. Gives you something to look forward to that feast. You get a huge dopamine hit. You're you know, you're you're gonna be much more efficient people in general if if they're in that the like that hunger state throughout the day, right? The, what goes on with the hormones and uh the hunger passes quick, right? And then you have that in the now dinner, by that point our day should be pretty much, hey, I can relax. Like mm -hmm. so I want people to eat in that relaxed state and that parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah. And it's also when you have the downtime. So if you have the downtime at night and you're starving. You know, that's yeah. you think about it more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you said something that that really resonated because, like, Steve Jobs with this wife, you know, working with Apple back in the day with Steve Jobs, you know, uh, rest in peace. Uh, he liked to limit decisions. That's why he always wore the same thing. Yeah. Black shirt and the the pants, the slacks. That's why you always see him with the turtleneck, all that. Because he took... He wanted to limit, he wanted no other decisions to take up time and mental energy, which is similar to what you're saying, like yeah. leaving it up to you to for the habits or whatever. The similar principle, it's you know, like percent. one less thing to think about. Yeah. Like don't leave it up to your will, your desire, whatever that might be. It's a thousand percent. That gray area is going to eat up so much mental energy when you don't make a decision. And in the willpower, that part of your brain is very finite. By the end of the day, that, that part of your brain is depleted. You know the frontal lobe, right? It's it's gone. So if you're relying on willpower, because you you gave uh, you didn't make decisions with all this stuff throughout the day, you're gonna be shot. You're not gonna succeed. And you see that with people all the time. Oh, I'm starting my diet. End of the day, they're in the pantry eating cookies. They didn't intend to do that, but that that drug of food and, and the emotional state they're in and the executive functioning is lowered. No chance. Yeah, I mean, and we anything. That's what people, we try to overcomplicate things like with success and like other things. But you have to, you don't create discipline. You create habits. Yes. <laughs> you know, like. Great, great way to put it. It's like, uh, no, you, you just have to. Like, like we were talking about this show. Like, uh, all right, we're doing two a week. You know, like just set up, you have to set up things that like, okay, that create. Yeah. The habitual things that we do as human beings because we're, we are like it's so funny as human beings, like we become and, and have a hard time breaking out of those patterns. But once you can get them set and remove like what you think you want to do, yes, it, everything gets a lot easier. It does. And that's the brain is a pattern recognition machine. You know, that, that's, it likes prediction and response. So we got to give it that to move forward constantly. And a lot of people once they recognize patterns, utilize and they can create patterns. It's huge. Is the, so the, we call it the panda workout. Well, where does the workout come so in the, on top the, of the, the diet? Workout, so I call it uh, the panda method, right? It right. encompasses everything. Panda so method. that's fast beast, which is your training. Yep. And then your feast. So the, the first thing I tell people, because I get people that come to me that, you know, when I do my challenges, they don't have any background working out. And again, thinking about habits or where they're at, just start walking. Right. So I tell people you should do something every day. Walking is highly underrated. So at least a walk. Right. And start with 20 minutes and you build up, let momentum build. But then when we get into the weights, it's, it's that full body stuff I, I do. Uh, you know, we're pushing it. We're doing crazy long, like for me personally, like long sets of squats, stuff that we're just getting a challenge. We do like a, a barbarian walk when, once it gets uh, summer months where the guys go out. We got to, as a team, go half a mile with all this, this crazy weights and all this. So it, it's just getting people to realize as far as the workout. I get a lot of people that want, so we're not, we're not getting lean through the working out. That's a big myth. 
Right. It's more for your brain than anything else. But then as far as building muscle, I get that a lot. And they always want to say, well, how am I going to eat that much to build muscle? They always skip over the training. The training, if you want to put on muscle, that's the stimulus, not what you're eating. It's are you training hard enough to force that adaptation? So with that, then you got to apply different intensity techniques with the training. You got to apply a high, greater stress for the body to come back bigger and stronger. So I, I incorporate all that stuff. Uh, the biggest thing is you got to be mentally engaged. So you got to make sure that you're into what you're doing. Yeah. Is it, um, is the Panda method, I guess, sounds like you can have a lot of different outcomes. You yeah. Know, like you could do it for lean, but getting lean. Yeah. Like you could do it for building muscle if you build in the right workouts. Yeah. So it sounds like it's got it a lot of variability. Yeah. And it's, it's physically, it has variability. You know, blood work's going to improve. You're going to see all this stuff. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? You have all these deeper health benefits, cellular, you know, autophagy and, uh, you know, healing your insulin resistance. But to me, it's more of a self-development tool when you peel it back because now you got to worry, not worry about it. You got to focus on this inner dialogue. Oh, I still got 12 more hours to go, but I'm feeling a little hunger. Okay, how do you deal with that? What do you tell yourself? So the, the, the ability to think about your thoughts, like that metacognition is greatly enhanced when you're fasting long form. So that's like the biggest benefit. And then your energy is going to come up too for many reasons when you do this. So like, that's a huge benefit, right? And it, so it's, it gives people the confidence to take control of, over other areas of their life too. What are like, you know, I'm sure they're both foundational for you. They may be part of the Panda method, but like some of the other things, like whether it's supplementation, whether it's, you know, cold plunges, like, you know, yeah. are there other yeah. like very things that you recommend that have been yeah. part of your kind of routine? Yeah. Big time, man. So the cold therapy is huge. Um, that's become a, a big part of my routine. I built a cold tub at home. I have a box freezer, went through Wim Hof's. I've, I failed many times with Wim Hof's course. I'm six five two sixty, brother. You got a box you freezer that I can one. fit in. You got to, you know, it's a funny story about that. <laughs> I'm going to go to the meat you, market. Yeah, you're going to have to, man. But I went to Lowe's to get it. I asked the guy, I said, hey, this is going to be weird, but do you care if I get into the freezer? He's like, what? He's like, I don't care. He's like, and I explained what I was doing. So I had to do that. So yeah, you'd have to definitely test it out first, man. Make sure that- I you might just have to buy one of those pre-made ones. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you could do that too. Yeah. So I got that. But, but that to me is huge. You know, yeah. it's a love-hate. I hate getting in it, but it just feel fantastic. How long do you get in? I'll go, I try to get two and a half to four minutes on, on the- on Every end. day? Yeah, I try to do every day. I did a cold shower this morning because of traveling. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, I love the mental toughness aspect, but then you're getting the dopamine, you're getting, you're getting metabolic rate goes up. So that's a big thing. At night, I tape my mouth shut when I sleep, right? So, so make sure I'm breathing through my nose. That has come up a lot. We've been talking a lot. Oh, yeah, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Between the Vegas podcast and Dragon, like a lot, the mouth taping seems to be, uh, Popping yeah. up. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's I don't like, know if I could do that. Well, a lot of people, I'm like, okay, just sit in a chair first and just test it. You know, because a lot of people might get like a claustrophobic or suffocation feeling. But if you're breathing through your mouth when you sleep at night, you're, it's not good for your health. So I was like, all right, this is an easy way. Medical tape. So I do that and I, my wife still laughs about it. And I always <laughs> say, you want a piece? No, I don't need a piece. You know, so I do that. Um, what else? Do I, probably the, the most far out thing I started doing a little over a year ago is urine therapy, which a lot of people have no idea about. All right. I, my mind the, is swirling here on the rat. I told you it was fucking radical. We cover here on the rat cast. Urine therapy. Here urine, we go. Urine therapy. So where did this come from? Where did I hear it? I was listening to this interview with this doctor um, and he was talking about the, the vaccines at the time with COVID, right? And the clotting issues. And I didn't, me and my family didn't get them, whatever you, you know, but it's, he's talking about, the guy said, what, what can people do that got it for the clotting? He goes, it's going to sound really weird. He goes, but there's all these compounds in your urine that dissolve clots. And he started going on about the other health benefits. I'm like, wow. And so I started researching it. I'm like, what is urine therapy? How does this work? I was like, it's I going put, where I think it's going. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I did. <laughs> so I started reading, but what I do, as soon as I learned something like that, I heard, I remember I heard it that day, next day I did it, you know? So first thing in the morning, pee in a cup, about two ounces or so, you know? And I posted on my Instagram on my story pretty much every day. 
And people were like, you shouldn't have posted. I'm like, but I I, this is what I did. Yet. Yeah. I don't think that was a You go on the stories, yet. you'll see it, man. Yeah. I, I do it to the pina colada song or the uh, Rupert <laughs> Do you mix it with anything? No. No, you just do that. Can you? I can suppose. you throw your Gatorade? <laughs> yeah, I suppose you can. But but look, it's got 2,600 enzymes, hormones, nutrients, stem cells, already highly filtered by your body. So if you look at the research on it and what the most studied thing by pharmaceutical and medical community, they don't tell you it's urine because there's so many powerful compounds in it. If you look at skincare products for women, the number one thing in there is urea. It comes from urine. If you look at, at the Indian snake charmers that dance with the king cobras, what do they always have next to them? Bottle of urine. Because it's fantastic at healing wounds if they get bit, but it's an anti-venom if they drink it. So it's like there's all these things. And, and it's like, okay, to me, I believe a lot of this stuff has been hidden from us intentionally. You know, for if you can develop even through fasting all this superior health, why isn't this taught? Right. And I have different theories about that, but it's. So what the, exactly is the, what are the, I, I'm hearing the uses of it, but the, let's just be clear. We're drinking our own urine. Correct. Yeah. Two ounces a day. About two. Two ounces now, a day, every day. Uh, yeah, yeah. And what are the overall from drinking it? Absolute benefits. So like, yeah, it's hormonally, you know, now I, I haven't. I should have done blood work before I started it yeah, to see. Right. But I know it's a huge antiviral, antibiotic, antiparasitic, antifungal. Um, so those aspects. Now, when, when you drink it too, your urea is going to go up slightly in your blood, which which makes it even more potent as an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. So an another thing I started What's it doing, taste like? It, it, it'll vary depending what you <laughs> ate. Like if I'm in a longer fast, right, it's, it's, it's going to taste different. Sometimes it's almost Swedish, like sweet. Sometimes it's bitter, right? Um, and something I started doing, I haven't done it. Is there day. any instance where someone shouldn't yes. do it? Okay. If, if, you, if you're on a lot of medication, if you're really not healthy, because th th there's going to be toxins in there then, mm. right? You're just recycling some of this stuff. If you're a big drinker and you're doing that, you're kind of putting a lot of that stuff back into your body. Okay. So the better shape you're in, you know, the, the better. When you know you're leaving you clean, you got everything cleaning up. Yeah. Probably the best time to do it. Yeah. And just as a as a disclaimer, we make no medical claims here on the Radcast. <laughs> it's just and, me uh, experimenting. The panda man Kyle Newell is yeah you know, sharing what he does. Yes, and so yes. yeah, yeah, and that's <laughs> what yeah. I do. I experiment. But still, yeah. I mean, it makes sense on one level, and I do look. The Vacay Podcast is always is all about alternative wellness, and our firm belief is that not only have things have been hidden from us, you know, pharmaceutical companies, all this stuff. At some point lab-based things became good and things from the earth became taboo and bad. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Who profited from that? Exactly. You know? Yeah. And so you, you, you preach into the choir, yeah. you know, on, on that belief. Sure. Now I can't say, I, I think I feel like I've heard of, of the urine thing, but I always wrote that one a little bit off as, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> not quite sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, the only way. I mean, how I long you been doing that? Uh, since, Two Novembers ago, so over a year now. Okay. You know, I'm still living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people tell me, you can't do, do you that. Put, you now, is that built into the panda method? No, I don't. Okay. I, don't I don't, like, even the cold plunge and all that. Like, yeah. that, when people, and it was, I want, like, private coaching, eventually yeah. we might work into that stuff. But I'm like, okay, get this. Get your foundational stuff. Get your daily walk. Yeah. You know, get your fasting going. And then if they want and most people with the urine. The walking thing is becoming, it's starting to build up too. I mean, like Andy for Solo, like yeah. 75 Hard, got the walk yeah, built yeah. into it and yeah. all that stuff. And like, so there's. Walking is so a, underrated, man. Yeah. It, it's so good for you. It is. Well, I think it's just motion, man. Yeah, it is. It's, it's like we're so sedentary with like our jobs and like doing stuff. It's yeah. like, you know, go figure. If we move around some all day, you know, our long periods, it's good for you. Yeah. You know, our yeah. ancestors, all they did was walk around. Walk, man. And it's it's really the only form of exercise that's going to lower stress hormones. You're going to get a lot of ideas mm -hmm. when you're walking. So yeah. it, it's just like, why would you not do it? Almost, most people can walk. You know, like it, it, it's a low barrier for people to, to do something. Yeah. Well, the, the American diet, you know, it's got a lot of people, you know, on the couch or oh, yeah. overweight or. Big time. All of those things. But. And there's something to be said also, especially when you do it alone. And, and I find it therapeutic. Like my wife and I will go on walks on vacation, things like that, which is a whole different experience. But alone, when you're walking, you're not talking. So you're thinking. Yes. It's like time to think. Yeah. You know? And so I think that's 
underrated. It's, it's, we don't spend enough time thinking. Yeah, really. That's <laughs> as the, fucked up as that is. You're th- I tell people that all the time. That's the number one important thing that we should do as human beings is actually take time to think. Yeah, because without thinking, there's no discernment. No. And without discernment becomes taking a lot of orders and just doing what the herd is. Yeah. And that's a problem. It is. At some point, you know. It's a big problem. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the group think, you know, and just following along just because that's what, like, people can't think for themselves. What are the six? I know there's been success stories, you know, from the Panda Diet, the Panda yeah. Method. Like, what, what, what have been some, you know, the, the gratitude you've gotten from that, from like seeing the results you've well, seen? you have the massive weight loss ones, 100 pounds, 100 pounds plus. Like, that's all you've had. Yeah. Clients and people that have done it. Oh, yeah. 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 That's always amazing. Right. That's always amazing. But it's, it, it, it's the, my favorite ones are that, that dad that's, you know, in our age range. That all of a sudden, man, they start looking a little better, feeling better. Their confidence comes back, right? And they start to say, "Oh man, you know, I've been doing it wrong this whole time, or not not optimal." And you know that that just carries over to them being a better father. Yeah, right. Like that—that's to me what I really want. Is I'm passionate about that, helping dads become better fathers. Yeah, I know. Being we can talk about it. your dad. Yeah, you got three kids. Yeah, you know what are they just again? Eight, six, and four. So we got two boys and a girl. Okay, who's the youngest? Emma's the youngest. Yeah. Oh, girls young. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. I told you. I, I got the. There's four boys in my family, three brothers. So this was completely, and we had two boys. So this was new territory for me. You know, any of your brothers doing the panda method? Yeah, they they pretty much all do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. youngest one I told you about. He, yeah, he doesn't go as long. He might do like a 20 hour fast, and he's always like, "Well, what about this?" I'm like, "Just do it." I, Laid out for you. It works, man. Yeah. But the other brothers do it. Yeah, they do their 48 every week. And then we'll hit, you know, if you want to tighten up a little for a summer, okay, we'll hit a string of 72s. It's so simple, man. Yeah. And you still get to enjoy what you eat. What I bet, I mean, that seems like a good way. I know you're not coaching it this way, but it seems like a good way if you're trying to drop weight quickly, too, for like a week or two. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah know, and you, the, and you yeah. drop like five, 10 pounds. It, it's, it's so simple. It, it's <laughs> so simple if you had to make a weight for a division or something. <clears throat> And if you're putting your sodium in and all that, and if you've already been somewhat acclimated to some type of fasting, it makes it so so much easier, you know, to get get to that weight. Or hey, I got to shoot. I got to look this way. Okay. What are some people? All right, I'm going to play the voice of the people listening. How do you make? How do you get into this where you make it through the fasting? Obviously, it's the willpower and all that stuff we've talked about. But like, what are the tips and tricks to to get through? The fasting. Yeah. So as far as physically, we call it the juice, right? So there's different salts you would put in your water, you know, sodium, potassium, baking soda. So that's going to help you just feel great. Where most people are deficient. And that's one of your supplements, isn't it? Yeah. So it's my one body made it, uh, made it into a supplement as far as it's undisputed juice, which tastes really good, made with stevia, monk fruit extract. But Or you can make it on your own, you know, and just put the salts in there in, in, in your water. So that's one thing, right? That's going to fight hunger pangs. It's going to keep performance up. So that that's really good. Now, it really comes down to the mental. So people are going to feel hunger. And I differentiate when I teach people this. Hunger and appetite aren't the same thing. A lot of people think they're the same thing, right? Hunger can be signaled just by smelling food, right? It doesn't mean you actually need to go eat, right? So when I teach people, okay, your body fat, one of the main things I teach out the gate is a food source. That's the primary reason we have it is fuel. Not the only reason, but the primary reason. So if we want to tap into that, we're going to have to go through these periods where we're not eating for a while, keep insulin low. So when you feel hunger, you have to reframe it. Like, this is the key thing. This is what fat loss feels like when mm. you feel it. So now you just flipped it in your head. It's almost a good thing. You seek out. Like, I get a saying that, right? I get a little hunger pang right now. I'm like, this is good. It gives me that energy, that primal thing that you got to tap into. So it's just reframing it. Mm. That's the biggest thing is, is that. And, um, then as far as making it through, like, so incremental fasting is something else that we develop instead of intermittent. <clears throat> Normally, like in my regular Panda Challenge, I'll take people right into the 48 to build their confidence. So, okay, you're going to be fine. Let's do, go right out the gate. But then the incremental is, okay, t- just take it 12 hours at a time. You know, so you're not thinking too far out. When you get to that 12-hour mark, decide. Do I want to keep going? Can I keep going? And that way you can string together some pretty long fasts mm-hmm. doing that. But it's really that that mental, this is what fat loss feels like. Or I, me, I'm telling myself, I'm building mental muscle every time I do this. Yeah. 
You know, and then once it gets to a habit, it's it's easy. Can we drink whatever we want as long as there's no calories? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Yeah, black coffee, tea. Uh, you could do you know, my uh, monster, no energy, so, or no sugar. Yeah. So the, the, the <laughs> thing, I, I went away from. Uh, I don't do those that much anymore, just because yeah. all the ca- the chemicals in them. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, okay, the liver's got to detoxify all this. But caffeine's okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Big time. Because caffeine will make it. You, you cup of coffee, black coffee will. Yeah. Kind of kills hunger it itself will. a little Thousand bit. Percent. That yeah. workout, you know, it's going to really keep that that appetite or that hunger limited. Yeah. What's the what's like the most strenuous time point? Like, is it is it mon- is it Tuesday morning or Tuesday at lunchtime where it's so like in a regular forty eight? The hardest the hardest part you so got to get funny. over, it, or is it Monday at like seven p.m.? <laughs> I would say I would say for most people, if they're doing that that protocol, it, it's that Monday night around dinner, right? Because you have these entrainment patterns when your body expects food. Yeah, Tuesday by and large. You know dinner's coming that night, yeah. and so you, you, you know kind of woke up, wake up, you're kind of, yeah. you're not that hungry, you're maybe. That, and you're going to feel great Tuesday. Like, most people are like, man, I, I don't remember ever feeling this great. Like, the energy, the clarity, you feel light. So it's kind of the opposite of what people think happens. But as you get closer to dinner, that's when some of those hunger hormones are released because you're expecting it, right, the, the pattern. And <laughs> you know you're The yeah. pattern. It's like, oh, yeah. man, I, I can't wait to get there. So that's where <laughs> people will usually struggle a little bit. <laughs> Keep yourself busy. Yeah, that's it. Stay busy. <laughs> yeah. Keep busy. Where's this all going, Kyle? What's, what's, what's the future hold? I think the future holds. <laughs> you know, we, we have a vision of helping millions of people that are struggling, right? And, and to me, again, the body is just, the, it's the doorway. It's the entryway. You know, get the body healthy. That body is your temple. It houses your mind and your spirit. So let's get that right. Right. And then we could become more confident. We could increase our energy. And I, I think it's just really transforming lives, you know, those million lives through through inspiring them, just sharing how I live. Right. Like I'm on the same path as everybody else. I'm just learning and I share what I learn. So it, it's kind of having that legacy when it's all said and done is, OK, people, you know, with what I teach, you know, with the fasting or the mindset, like, oh, I want them to look back and be like, of course, that was you know, but we didn't used to think that way. Like, this is the way, you know, this is the way to do it. And, uh, you know, it, the main thing for me is, is setting the pattern for my kids too, that they see that I'm, I'm trying to achieve what I set out to achieve and giving them that pattern to model. Like that, yeah. that's the main thing. Yep. Strong, man. If where can people keep up with everything you got going on? They can go to uh, the Panda Man official on Instagram. Um, TikTok, we've got a lot of followers there too. YouTube, the Panda Man Official. And then if they go to the website, the pandamanofficial.com, they can get uh, some free downloads. They get an awesome fasting book, which breaks everything down. And, and when people reach out to me, I always I always get back to them personally. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I really appreciate you coming in. Maybe we'll have to do a follow up here later yeah. in the year. Yeah. And uh, I would love that. You know, it's, uh, it's always, I don't know, meeting people, you tell me your age and mindset, it's always uh, rewarding, and I, I just can't appreciate it enough. Yeah, thank you, Ron. This has been awesome. We'll definitely have to do part two, man. Yeah, for sure. Hey, guys, you can find us, theradcast.com. Search for Kyle Newell. You'll find all, or just the Panda Man. You kidding me? Search for the Panda Man. All the highlight clips will be attached to those keywords. Find the highlight clips, the full episodes, the YouTube, everything. All at the radcast.com. You know where to find me, Ryan Alford, on all the social media platforms. Had that blue check before you could buy it. We'll see you next time on the Radcast. To listen or watch full episodes, visit us on the web at the radcast.com or follow us on social media at our Instagram account, the.rad.cast or at Ryan Alford. Stay radical. Take a break.